Shalom brothers and sisters. I am back with another video. I'm going to finish this up from the Coburn Bible. I'm going to be in chapter 6 on um, the dark days. We're going to get straight into it. Okay, brothers and sisters, I'm just going to be discussing some of the key points in chapter 6 on um, the dark days. Okay, so when you listen to um, the dark days, you will see a little bit more that I have put here. I just jotted down a couple of things that I just wanted to mention. Um, so the dark days began when there were strange signs in the skies. Um, the leaders of the slaves who were the Israelites, um, prophesied um, of great events okay uh, people were ignorant back then but they knew all about those great events so I just want to make that a, as a key point you guys even the temper um, seers or the psychics didn't know what was to come okay it was like um, they calm before the storm and people didn't know what was coming okay the people felt something was about to happen the energy shifted in the land and people were saddened um, the hearts of men were troubled um, so even think about today you guys what's going on right now it's like the energy is shifting right now in the land um, it's kind of like that calm before the storm you know there's a lot of people been wondering like what's going on it feels like something is about to happen it's like I don't know it's like everybody feel something and they just don't know what it is or they can't pinpoint it but they feel something okay so it could be kind of like what they were experiencing back in those days like they saw some of the the signs in the skies just like we're seeing them as well so you got to kind of understand what the people were feeling in the land okay now um the slaves um actually became it says bold and disrespectful and the women um became um well the, the women were being used okay basically so well we kind of see that today with some of the hebrews <laughs> they are very bold and they disrespect women as well and that, that's all i'm going to say about that so we're going to move on now it says fear walked the land um women became barren due to terror and some women had miscarriages okay um, during the days of stillness loud sounds were heard in the heavens and people became afraid same thing is happening today you guys people are taking videos and you can hear like these loud eerie sounds in the back and they're saying all oh, these are the trumpets blowing and things like that and some people saying it's just some stuff that's coming from underground it's a war underground and it's a whole lot of stuff that's going on on the earth so a lot of people are hearing very loud sounds um you know so people are becoming afraid of that so who knows is this the same thing that they were feeling back in those days i don't know now people um spoke of the god of the slaves or the hebrews um they knew his manifestation was in the heavens for all men to see okay so some of these um people they knew who um the god of the um, slaves were they knew that it was this planet okay they knew that the slaves or the hebrews were um identified with this nibiru planet okay um the god of the hebrews were seen in the heavens and they fear the planet Nibiru. So that's basically where the fear is coming from. Um, I would be afraid to <laughs> if I saw this big old planet in the sky. And um, yeah, I think I would be scared too. And I'm seeing all this stuff going on around me and all this destruction. I would be kind of afraid as well, okay? Um, yeah so the people cried out to the pharaoh because many things were happening in the land plagues were sent forth across the land dust and smoke clouds darkened the sky this could have been a volcano eruption um, and the dust clouds could have reached the land of egypt if you do a little bit of research about what happened back during the exodus there was a volcano eruption and then if you look further you will see how they actually found um 
some ash deposits or something like that in the land of Egypt where they said that it could have been a volcano eruption. So moving right along. Now also we see that the rivers turned red and the water became toxic and polluted. Okay. In the glow of Nibiru, the earth was filled with redness. Um, the trees were destroyed, hailstones smashed down on the land. Um, the weather conditions were horrible. Um, the fish in the river died due to the polluted waters. Um, there were swarms of locusts that covered the sky. Um, as Nibiru crossed the heavens, it blew great gusts of cinders across the face of the land. Once again, this signifies a volcano eruption. Um, there were days of darkness in the land as the dark ash clouds uh, mostly blocked sunlight. Okay, no one, no, nobody knew when it was day or when it was night. Now, the thick darkness is actually being described in the Coven Bible, and they described it as saying that um, that the breath of men was stopped in their throats. This is what it's describing in there. Man inhaled in a hot cloud or vapor. So this is hot air and gases, you guys, from a volcano eruption. They couldn't breathe, okay? Let's move on. Later, you will see that it says the ashes of the um, volcano eruption put out all the lamps and fires in the land. Men laid numb and cried in their beds. No one spoke to each other or ate because they were all in despair. Um, they lost hope, basically, you guys. So they just, they was like giving up and like, man, this is crazy, okay? Now, the ships or the boats were swept away from their docks due to a very intense storm. Um, the boats were destroyed in the storms, okay? Now, it said that the earth turned over. Sounds like a pole shift, possibly, but I can't really pinpoint that. But it, the earth turned over. Something had to be going on, okay? Now, the dead were being cast up out their graves. People stopped working in the land. Um, there was great lamentation heard throughout the land. So it was this really huge cry in the land. Everybody was really sad, you guys. It was just horrible. If I would like to compare this with anything, this is what you will call the great tribulation in the Bible. All of these things that we're talking about, about the, the dark days, and the Coran Bible actually points to the Great Tribulation, which is that three and a half year period um, that we will have to go through. So during that time, you guys, it's going to be kind of, it's, it's not going to be good, okay? It's, it's going to be hard, okay? Um, it tells you that we really have to endure, okay, to the end. So we have to make it through, you guys. We can't lose hope and um if, if it was up to me, I would say that we're already in the Great Tribulation period. We have not seen the height of this thing yet. And um, I, I don't know, you guys. I don't know at what point um, this is going to be. Um, Y'all, I don't know. Because I've been monitoring this myself and it's, it seems to be getting worse. Okay. Now, um. The high and the low prayed, okay, in the land, okay, that the hardship would end. Um, there was terror by day and horror by night. So men lost it, you guys, and they went crazy. Now, when the Nibiru um, reached perihelion, which means closest to the sun, there was a large earthquake, y'all. This was it. It was this large earthquake. You can look in the Bible how it says that, too, how it's going to be a very large earthquake. It's trying to show you when Nibiru reaches its height, okay? And I think that's when it's at perihelion, when it's closest to the sun, okay? I don't know everything. I'm no, like, <laughs> I'm just putting this out there. Do your own research so that you can see and follow Nibiru on its path so that you can see what's going on. There's way more people that specializes in this. I don't, okay? So I'm not no expert. Um, on the the orbits and all of that stuff. I'm not an expert. Okay now Now statues were broken and men um, fled from their homes and some of them fell in the cracks when the earth split open 
that's crazy y'all that this is what it was telling you that was happening with this large earthquake okay the buildings collapsed upon those inside and everyone were in panic but the slaves were all safe in their homes they were spared you can kind of see this in the bible you guys all this stuff kind of go hand in hand with the exodus okay so you can reference this and go to the bible and see because it's like from two different stories, two different perspectives on what happened, okay? Now, um, it shows you that the land was on fire. The highborn in Egypt, or which is known as your upper class, were all destroyed in the ruins, okay? Even the firstborn of the Pharaoh died in the ruins. Y'all see that? Remember how in the Bible talk about how the destroyer was sent? <laughs> the angel of death across the land? Y'all, this is what this is talking about. This was Nibiru, okay? It was all of the disasters that was happening because of this destroyer or this this um, planet that was actually crossing over the heavens. This is what caused the destructions in the land of Egypt, okay? Now, according to this, it says that there was nine days of darkness, okay? Um, in the Bible, I think it says three days of darkness, okay? So... Here you go. You got two different references, two different point of views. This is what's going on, okay? Now, after the passing of Nibiru, they buried the dead, okay? Men revolted against those in authority and fled from the city. So, of course, you can see it was a little uproar. So, things was going on, y'all. People was pissed off. They was mad. You know what I'm saying? Egypt lacked great, great men, and they were weak from fear okay they gave the slaves their gold silver lapis lazuli and turquoise um and we can see that and, and we see that in the bible how the slaves got all the riches okay now it also says that the pharaoh remained calm but the people turned to wickedness in their weakness and despair okay let's move on to the next slide from the coburn bible the book of manuscripts chapter six the dark days. The dark days began with the last visitation of the destroyer and they were foretold by strange omens in the skies. All men were silent and went about with pale faces. The leaders of the slaves which had built a city to the glory of Tom stirred up unrest, and no man raised his arm against them. They foretold great events of which the people were ignorant and of which the temple seers were not informed. These were days of ominous calm, when the people waited for they knew not what. The presence of an unseen doom was felt, the hearts of men were stricken. Laughter was heard no more and grief and wailing sounded throughout the land. Even the voices of children were stilled and they did not play together, but stood silent. The slaves became bold and insolent and women were the possession of any man. Fear walked the land and women became barren with terror they could not conceive, and those with child aborted. All men closed up within themselves. The days of stillness were followed by a time when the noise of trumpeting and shrilling was heard in the heavens, and the people became as frightened beasts without a herdsman, as asses when lions prowl without their fold. The people spoke of the God of the slaves, and reckless men said, If we knew where this God were to be found, we would sacrifice to him. But the God of the slaves was not among them. He was not to be found within the swamplands or in the brick pits. His manifestation was in the heavens for all men to see, but they did not see with understanding. Nor would any God listen, for all were dumb because of the hypocrisy of men. The dead were no longer sacred and were thrown into the waters. Those already entombed were neglected and many became exposed. They lay unprotected against the hands of thieves. He who once toiled long in the sun, bearing the yoke himself, now possessed oxen. He who grew no grain now owned a storehouse full. He who once dwelt at ease among his children now thirsted for water. He who once sat in the sun with crumbs and dregs, was now bloated with food. He reclined in the shade, his bowls overflowing. Cattle were left unattended to roam into strange pastures and men ignored their marks and slew the beasts of their neighbors. No man owned anything. The public records were cast forth and destroyed, and no man knew who were slaves and who were masters. 
the people cried out to the Pharaoh in their distress, but he stopped his ears and acted like a deaf man. There were those who spoke falsely before Pharaoh and had gods hostile towards the land, therefore the people cried out for their blood to appease it. But it was not these strange priests who put strife in the land instead of peace, for one was even of the household of Pharaoh and walked among the people unhampered. Dust and smoke clouds darkened the sky and colored the waters upon which they fell with a bloody hue. Plague was throughout the land, the river was bloody and blood was everywhere. The water was vile and men's stomachs shrank from drinking. Those who did drink from the river vomited it up, for it was polluted. The dust tore wounds in the skin of man and beast. In the glow of the destroyer the earth was filled fault with redness. Vermin bred and filled the air and face of the earth with loathsomeness. Wild beasts, afflicted fault with torments under the lashing sand and ashes, came out of their lairs in the wastelands and cave places and stalked the abodes of men. All the tame beasts whimpered and the land was filled with the cries of sheep and moans of cattle. Trees, throughout the land, were destroyed and no herb or fit was to be found. The face of the land was battered and devastated by a hail of stones which smashed down all that stood in the path of the torrent. They swept down in hot showers, and strange flowing fire ran along the ground in their wake. The fish of the river died in the polluted waters, worms, insects and reptiles sprang up from the earth in huge numbers. Great gusts of wind brought swarms of locusts which covered the sky. As the destroyer flung itself through the heavens, it blew great gusts of cinders across the face of the land. The gloom of a long night spread. A dark mantle of blackness which extinguished every ray of light. None knew when it was day and when it was night, for the sun cast no shadow. The darkness was not the clean blackness of night, but a thick darkness in which the breath of men was stopped in their throats. Men gasped in a hot cloud of vapor which enveloped all the land and snuffed out all lamps and fires. Men were benumbed and lay moaning in their beds. None spoke to another or took food, for they were overwhelmed with despair. Ships were sucked away from their moorings and destroyed in great whirlpools. It was a time of undoing. The earth turned over, as clay spun upon a potter's wheel. The whole land was filled with uproar from the thunder of the destroyer overhead and the cry of the people. There is the sound of moaning and lamentation on every side. The earth spewed up its dead, corpses were cast up out of their resting places and the embalmed were revealed to the sight of all men. Pregnant women miscarried and the seed of men was stopped. The craftsman left his task undone, the potter abandoned his wheel and the carpenter his tools, and they departed to dwell in the marshes. All crafts were neglected and the slaves lured the craftsmen away. The dues of Pharaoh could not be collected, for there was neither wheat nor barley, goose nor fish. The rights of Pharaoh could not be enforced, for the fields of grain and the pastures were destroyed. The highborn and the lowly prayed together that might come to an end and the turmoil and thundering ceased to beat upon their ears. Terror was the companion of men by day and horror their companion by night. Men lost their senses and became mad, they were distracted by frightfulness. On the great night of the destroyer's wrath, when its terror was at its height, there was a hail of rocks and the earth heaved as pain rent her bowels. Gates, columns and walls were consumed by fire and the statues of gods were overthrown and broken. People fled outside their dwellings in fear and were slain by the hail. Those who took shelter from the hail were swallowed when the earth split open. The habitations of men collapsed upon those inside and there was panic on every hand, but the slaves who lived in huts in the reedlands, at the place of pits, were spared. The land burned like tinder, a man watched upon his rooftops and the heavens hurled wrath upon him and he died. The land writhed under the wrath of the destroyer and groaned with the agony of Egypt. It shook itself and the temples and palaces of the nobles were thrown down from their foundations. The highborn ones perished in the midst of the ruins and all the strength of the land was stricken. Even the great one, the first bomb of Pharaoh, died. 
with the highborn in the midst of the terror and falling stones. The children of princes were cast out into the streets and those who were not cast out died within their abodes. There were nine days of darkness and upheaval, while a tempest raged such as never had been known before. When it passed away brother buried brother throughout the land. Men rose up against those in authority and fled. From the cities to dwell in tents in the outlands. Egypt lacked great men to deal with the times. The people were weak from fear and bestowed gold, silver, lapis, lazuli, turquoise and copper upon the slaves, and to their priests they gave chalices, urns and ornaments. Pharaoh alone remained calm and strong in the midst of confusion. The people turned to wickedness in their weakness and despair. Harlots walked through the streets unashamed. Women paraded their limbs and flaunted their womanly charms. High-born women were in rags and the virtuous were mocked. The slaves spared by the destroyer left the accursed land forthwith. Their multitude moved in the gloom of a half-dawn, under a mantle of fine swirling gray ash, leaving the burnt fields and shattered cities behind them. Many Egyptians attached themselves to the host, for one who was great led them forth, a priest prince of the inner courtyard. Fire mounted upon high and its burning left with the enemies of Egypt. It rose up from the ground as a fountain and hung as a curtain in the sky. In seven days, by rim were the accursed ones journey to the waters. They crossed the heaving wilderness while the hills melted around them, above, the skies were torn with lightning. They were sped by terror, but their feet became entangled in the land and the wilderness shut them in. They knew not the way for no sign was constant before them. They turned before Nashari and stopped at Shikoth, the place of quarries. They passed the waters of Maha and came by the valley of Pikaroth, northward of Mara. They came up against the waters which blocked their way. And their hearts were in despair. The night was a night of fear and dread, for there was a high moaning above. And black winds from the underworld were loosed, and fire sprang up from the ground. The hearts of the slaves shrank within them, for they knew the wrath of Pharaoh followed them and that there was no way of escape. They hurled abuse on those who led them, strange rites were performed along the shore that night. The slaves disputed among themselves and there was violence. Pharaoh had gathered his army and followed the slaves. After he departed there were riots and disorders behind him, for the cities were plundered. The laws were cast out of the judgment halls and trampled underfoot in the streets. The storehouses and granaries were burst open and robbed. Roads were fiolated and none could pass. Along them people lay dead on every side. The palace was split and the princes and officials fled, so that none was left with authority to command. The lists of numbers were destroyed, public places were overthrown and households became confused and unknown. Pharaoh pressed on in sorrow, for behind him all was desolation and death. Before him were things he could not understand and he was afraid, but he carried himself well and stood before his host with courage. He sought to bring back the slaves, for the people said their magic was greater than the magic of Egypt. The host of Pharaoh came upon the slaves by the salt water shores, but was held back from them by a breath of fire. A great cloud was spread over the hosts and darkened the sky. None could see, except for the fiery glow and the unceasing lightnings which rent the covering cloud overhead. A whirlwind arose in the east and swept over the encamped hosts. A gale raged all night and in the red twilight. Dawn there was a movement of the earth, the waters receded from the seashore and were rolled back on themselves. There was a strange silence and men, in the gloom. It was seen that the waters had parted, leaving a passage between. The land had risen, but it was disturbed and trembled, the way was not straight or clear. The waters about were as if spun within a bowl, the swampland alone remained undisturbed. From the horn of the destroyer came a high shrilling noise which stopped the ears of men. The slaves had been making sacrifices in despair, their lamentations were loud. Now, before the strange sight. There was hesitation and doubt, for the space of a breath they stood still and silent. Then all was confusion and shouting, 
some pressing forward into the waters against all who sought to flee back from the unstable ground. Then, in exaltation, their leader led them into the midst of the waters through the confusion. Yet many sought to turn back into the host behind them, while others fled along the empty shores. All became still over the sea and upon the shore, but behind, the earth shook and boulders split with a great noise. The wrath of heaven was removed to a distance and stood upwards of the two hosts. Still the host of Pharaoh held its ranks, firm in resolve before the strange and awful happenings, and undaunted by the fury which raged by their side. Stem faces were lit darkly by the fiery curtain. Then the fury departed and there was silence, stillness spread over the land while the host of Pharaoh stood without movement in the red glow. Then, with a shout, the captains went forward and the host rose up behind them. The curtain of fire had rolled up into a dark billowing cloud which spread out as a canopy. There was a stirring of the waters, but they followed the evildoers past the place of the great whirlpool. The passage was confused in the midst of the waters and the ground beneath Un's table. Here, in the midst of a tumult of waters, Pharaoh fought against the hindmost of the slaves and prevailed over them, and there was a great slaughter amid the sand, the swamp and the water. The slaves cried out in despair, but their cries were unheeded. Their possessions were scattered behind them as they fled, so that the way was easier for them than for those who followed. Then the stillness was broken by a mighty roar and through the rolling pillars of cloud the wrath of the destroyer descended upon the hosts. The heavens roared as with a thousand thunders, the bowels of the earth were sundered and earth shrieked its agony. The cliffs were torn away and cast down. The dry ground fell beneath the waters and great waves broke upon the shore, sweeping in rocks from seaward. The great surge of rocks and waters overwhelmed the chariots of the Egyptians who went before the footmen. The chariot of the Pharaoh was hurled into the air as if by a mighty hand and was crushed in the midst of the rolling waters. Tidings of the disaster came back by Rahab, son of Tmet, who hastened on ahead of the terrified survivors. Because of his burning, he brought reports unto the people that the host had been destroyed by blast and deluge. The captains had gone, the strong men had fallen and none remained to command. Therefore, the people revolted. Because of the calamities which had befallen them, cowards slunk from their lairs and came forth boldly to assume the high offices of the dead. Comely and noble women, their protectors gone, were their prey. Of the slaves the greater number had perished before the host of Pharaoh. The broken land lay helpless and invaders came out of the gloom like carrion. A strange people came up against Egypt and none stood to fight for strength and courage were gone. The invaders, led by Alcanon, came up out of the land of gods, because of the wrath of heaven which had laid their land waste. There, too, had been a plague of reptiles and ants, signs and omens and an earthquake. There, also, had been turmoil and disaster, disorder and famine, with the gray breath of the destroyer sweeping the ground and stopping the breath of men. Anshara gathered together the remnants of his fighting men and the fighting men who were left in Egypt, and set forth to meet the children of darkness who came out of the eastern mountains by way of the wilderness and by way of Yethnabas. They fell upon the stricken land from behind the gray cloud, before the lifting of the darkness, and before the coming of the purifying winds. Regev went with Pharaoh and met the invaders at Harasher, but the hearts of the Egyptians were faint within them. Their spirits were no longer strong and they fell away before the battle was lost. Deserted by the gods. Above and below, their dwellings destroyed, their households scattered, they were as men already half dead. Their hearts were still filled with terror and with the memory of the wrath which had struck them from out of heaven. They were still filled with the memory of the fearsome sight of the destroyer and they knew not what they did. Pharaoh did not return to his city. He lost his heritage and was seized by a demon for many days. His women were polluted and his estates plundered. The children of darkness defiled the temples with rams and ravished women who were crazed and did not resist. 
they enslaved all who were left, the old, young men and boys. They oppressed the people and their delight was in mutilation and torture. Pharaoh abandoned his hopes and fled into the wilderness beyond the province of the lake, which is in the west. Towards the south, he lived a goodly liffy among the sand wanderers and wrote books. Good times came again, even under the invaders, and ships sailed upstream. The air was purified, the breath of the destroyer passed away and the land became filled again with growing things. Life was renewed throughout the whole land. Care taught these things to the children of light in the days of darkness, after the building of the ram Budith. Before the death of the pharaoh Ankt. This is written in this land and in our tongue by Luidra who, himself, chose it for saving. It was not seen until the latter days.